Hello everyone, great to see you again. Welcome to Homespun again, number 39. Can you believe it? And uh, well, we're really excited about today's episode because we've got Gerard Kelly in the green room in uh, Poets Corner, actually. Uh, even now he's writing some poetry and uh, going to be uh, sharing some stuff with us. Looking forward to that very much as we uh, connect again together in this um period of time that isolation has just crept in for so many of us and causing so much disharmony and dysfunction in our lives. But this is a time of change. It's a time where, you know, many people around the world are talking about the change that is happening, not only in society, but in church itself. Uh, Pope Francis uh, issued a paper just this week talking about the seismic change that he sees happening within the Catholic Church. Bob Mumford, uh, a, a very well-respected leader in the early days of the charismatic movement, 90 years old now, has just written a paper talking about the need for the change of structures and the way we do uh, church. Even the Anglican Church uh, this week have been looking afresh at the way they do their um, government and the, and the way they, they function as church. So it's a time of change. And one of the things that I sincerely uh, hope does not happen in when this is all over is that we don't just slip back into the way things always were. We're learning lots of things about technology, uh, the way to communicate online in many, many different ways. And of course, this homespun is just a small uh, part of that. So it's a time for change. And uh, I was speaking to someone online for my podcast series that uh, uh, comes out every, every so often uh, about the creative arts. And um, uh, David Garrett uh, from Scripture in Song used a phrase that, um, well, you know, is a phrase that I heard a while back and in fact wrote a song, has written a song about it. He talked about the tide turning and although it may be very in, imperceptible at the moment, I do believe that there's new and fresh ways of doing things that are going to emerge throughout this season. So I'm going to start with this song. You might have noticed, you know, it used to be like... Um, one of those things, Spot the Ball, was one of them. Uh, and then there was another quiz that used to come out on the Saturday night magazines and newspapers where you had two pictures and uh, you had to spot the difference between the pictures. And some of you might have noticed, particularly the guitarists, I've got my 12 string here today and uh, I'm sort of in a 12 string kind of mood. So uh, I was going to do a couple of songs on, on that 12 string and uh, we'll see how we go. But this is a song which is called The Tide Is Turning. Join this peaceful revolution Reverberating round the globe A monumental change is happening In every place I know In every place I know Give yourself to fresh expressions Open up to what's to come Concentrate on new beginnings The past is dead and gone The past is dead and gone The tide is turning The tide is turning The tide is turning Can you hear? Can you hear? Rid yourself of false assumptions of misconceptions you've been told There's no lim limitation Where faith begins to grow Where faith begins to grow The tide is turning The tide is turning The tide is turning Can you hear? Can you hear? Stronger, oh, and I can see it's getting stronger, oh, and I can see it's getting stronger every day. Hey, 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 the tide is turning, the tide is turning, the tide is turning. 
can you hear? Can you hear? Be creative in your thinking. Always look for better ways of sharing and communicating the language of today. The language of today. The tide is turning. The tide is turning. The tide is turning. Can you hear? Can you hear? The tide is turning. The tide is turning. The tide is turning. Can you hear? Can you yeah, the tide is turning. Can you hear? And it might seem very imperceptible, but you know, those people, uh, Bob Mumford, uh, Pope Francis, they're talking about the 500 year cycle, not only in uh, church life, but in modern culture, in, 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 in the way things are changing. And uh, let's keep our eyes and ears attuned to the way we do things. Let's be open to the fresh wind of the Spirit to breathe creativity in our communication, one with another, but out into this world. Keep my motives pure My conviction strong An undivided heart Surrendered to my God You've captured my attention You're everything to me Beyond this world's confusion It's Christ who reigns supreme Be glorified in my life today through the choices that I make Be glorified today Be glorified In my life today May my actions and my words Bring honor to your name There's a light that shines A holy flame that burns It comes to reconcile And heal this wounded earth The antidote to anger Our lies and jealousy Is found in recognizing It's Christ who reigns supreme be glorified in my life today Through the choices that I make Be glorified today Be glorified in my life today May my actions and my words bring honor to
underneath these skies All creation roams With the pangs of birth For a future hope In all my contradictions With every breath I breathe I pledge my loyal allegiance Christ who reigns supreme be glorified in my life today through the choices that I make be glorified today be glorified in my life today May my actions and my words bring honor to your name. Be glorified in my life today through the choices that I make. Be glorified today. Be glorified in my life today. May my actions and my words bring honor to your name. Yeah. Be glorified today through my actions and my words. And you know, worship is not just a passive thing that we do as we sing our songs in our meetings. But worship is living it out. Worth-ship. Worth-ship. Okay, here's to my guild. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for... Um, the birthday greetings that you you gave me i mean you know homespun next week will be number 40 number 40 almost as old as me but i was very very grateful for all your uh, birthday greetings and uh, they all came cascading in we had a great time i mean it's different isn't it having a birthday over over um lockdown as such but uh, we still managed to have uh, a really good time and uh, throughout the week actually I got a couple of early birthday presents because um, two people uh, re recorded on, on uh, Facebook uh, online a couple of my um, older songs um, Carol Lee Sampson well she did uh, a song called Raining in All Splendor which I really encourage you to listen to it's always nice to have other people sing your songs get different interpretation and Danny Oakes well he did a song which actually is my big my, my biggest song actually in America uh, which is hardly known over here um, but it's a song which is called As We Seek Your Face and um, Danny did a great job on that and it made me think well maybe um, I should do that this this week uh, uh, so uh, I know one or two of you were looking it up for the old recording of, of, of Dave singing as we seek your face uh, Danny did it in a slightly more up-tempo uh, way and I would encourage you to uh, go over and, and, and see that on, on my Facebook page but uh, this is the original version which is a, a little bit more um, well acoustic but also uh, a little slower and a bit more lingering in, in the mood but let's use it as a, a tool really to just focus our attention on what homespun is all about being together together yes but seeking god's face together as we seek your face may we know your heart 
feel your presence acceptance as we seek your face move among us now come reveal your power show your presence acceptance move among us now at your feet we to linger in the presence and that is a wonderful thing to be able to do to just stay there not feel we've got to rush away not feel we've got to get through the next song on the agenda but just be in God's presence to soak in his presence soak in that sense that we're accepted we're loved unconditionally right where we are not sometime in the future but right where we are today cherished as we seek your face may we know your heart feel your presence acceptance as we seek your face Move among us now, come reveal your power, show your presence, acceptance, move among us now, at your feet we Sovereign Lord, we cry holy, holy, at your feet we fall. And our regular band do meet with us week by week great to have you and for those who are tuning in for the first time we do want you to feel really 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 welcome whether you're used to this kind of thing or whether it's all totally new we love the fact you're here thanks for your messages it's wonderful may we know your acceptance may we know your peace Lord God well I said Gerard Kelly is uh, limbering up with in Poets Corner in the green room. Gerard is over there in, in France, in Normandy. And um, well, it's great to have you uh, here, Gerard. Says, there we are. Gerard, welcome. Hi, it's nice to see you, Dave. Thanks for yeah. letting <laughs> Let me join you across the channel. Yes. <laughs> Living in Normandy. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Uh, we've been here just over 10 years, 10 and a half years now. Mm. And, uh, loving it. We love this place. It's great. Because you are sort of part French, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, uh, my father was French-Irish. In fact, my grandmother was born just down the road, which we, I didn't know when we moved here, strangely. But uh, mm. she was born in uh, Lisieux, which is uh, close to where our place definitely is. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm part French. So you're part French, part Irish, yeah. part English. No, you... no, there is no English blood in me. No What's English in you at all? Little, little bit of Scottish, but the rest oh, is Irish. Oh, like my wife, yeah. French. 
more yeah. than a little bit of Scottish. Yeah. Did, did, am I right? You lived in Canada as well. Yeah, we did. Yeah, as a kid, I was about five years in Canada. Yeah, but that, was I was in a... Newfoundland, which is a piece of Ireland that was shipped across the Atlantic and stuck on the edge of Canada. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> Irish place, especially for you, was it? Yeah, basically, <laughs> is that the uh, is that the French speaking part? Of no, the... no, it's the Newfie speaking part. They have their own. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's an island. It's uh, this end of Canada. In fact, we were closer to London than we are to the other. Were to the other end of Canada when we lived there. Oh my so goodness! My goodness. It's, um, yeah, it's this end of Canada, and yeah, uh, yeah lovely place. Hmm. Well, <laughs> what is it like at the moment for for you in France with the with the, with the lockdown? Because uh, you know, everybody's getting the jab here. Yeah, well, they're jabbing some people here. It's quite simple. We don't actually have a lockdown at the moment, interestingly. We have a uh, six o'clock in the evening curfew, which is a bit bizarre. Mm -hmm. So everybody runs home at six. Uh, apart from that, uh, we some of the bigger shops are closed, but a lot aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, the restaurants and cafes are closed, which is obviously a um, death blow to French, French culture. <laughs> uh, we have to get takeaways. But we're still working. We still manage to gather as a church, which is great. We've had some gatherings. Have a few people that it's you know it's difficult for everybody, isn't it? We've got some families that don't want to come because they would rather self isolate and stuff. But um, yes. we've been carrying on, and we have a minister amongst the refugees in the city, which has got busier and busier. And um, obviously, their needs don't change. And if you're uh, if you're sleeping out on the streets, um, lockdown doesn't really mean anything, does it? So. No, that's right. So we've carried on working with them. So we're kind of busy, really. It's odd, actually. Yes. Yeah. But this has been such a an isolating time for so many people. And I know over this period of time, I mean, you've written a number of books of poetry, but uh, over this period of time, you, you've written a, a, a lot of poems connected uh, with, with... Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I basically, what I did at the beginning, the first job I did at the beginning of lockdown, because we were, we were actually in the UK for a while, and we were totally locked down, so I... I published a, a, a collection called uh, I See a New City, which was a whole bunch of stuff from probably 10 years altogether because it's been a long time since I'd published anything. So I'd got that done and got it published, which was nice. And that was. And then I discovered that I was writing, I was going out for walks every day, and I started writing about lockdown itself, um, which I found really quite uh, interesting. I found I really, I kind of met God in the midst of lockdown, really, in some significant ways. Um, so I, and that's a, a collection called A World Still Turning, where that, that turned into a sort of mini collection mm. of uh, reflections from lockdown, yeah. Uh, poems, prayers, and sometimes they're all mixed in together. Yeah, it's a, it's a mixture, really. I don't know what it is, to be honest. I just, you know, <laughs> some of it I put out on Twitter, uh, which is quite fun. So doing daily stuff. Because you've um, got this, you're very into, I mean, you know, Twitter. I'm, I, I've got Twitter, but I, I confess... Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, um, I don't quite get it. You know, it's so short. But you, yeah. you, you publish stuff on Twitter every day, don't you? What, are they, what is it called? Yeah, well, not, I haven't done it every day for a while, but I, yeah, I do. I called it Twitterges originally. Twitterges. And, yeah, Twitter the idea was to create yeah little liturgies on on Twitter, and I did that solidly for about seven years every day, and that was fun. I, I've kind of gone off it a little bit, mostly because Twitter has been overcome by either commercial or political interests. It's very difficult to find anything sort of remotely normal on Twitter these days. Mm. So, uh, but I still do it quite a lot. And now I put them on Facebook as well. But I like the idea of, I very much like the idea actually of prayers and poems that kind of arrive with people in that way. So it arrives, you know, on your phone or whatever. And you don't have to go to a bookshop and buy it. I like that idea. So I still do a bit of that. And I found it, I mean, to be honest, I, the reason I, I started it for fun and I carried on doing it because it was a great blessing to me. It was a real, real way of bringing focus for me. So I, yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, one of the things I love about poetry, I feel a great connection, you know, songwriters, poetry. Yeah, sure. It's yeah. different because with songs, yeah. you can just repeat, repeat the line <laughs> again and again. Well, I, I do that going, sometimes. You've got to sort of keep it moving <laughs> along. And uh, you, haven't got, you haven't got the backcloth, the safety net of, of music. With, sure. with a poem, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just uh, you. I, I can get away with things with music and 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 a few sort of duff words here and there. With a poem, <laughs> it's just there. It's stuck. Yeah. One of the things I love about it is is that it's so often it's the communication, it's the delivery of the poem that gets me from from the person who wrote it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, sometimes just reading it on the printed page doesn't quite have no, it no. for me. I love to yeah, hear yeah. 
the delivery. Do you, do you agree with yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Dylan Thomas, who's one of my all-time heroes, great, great writer, uh, his phrase was, a poem on the page is only half a poem, because um, he believed the same thing. He would, he would absolutely revel in being with a, an audience and making it happen live, yeah. So, yeah, I agree. I, find, I, I actually find it quite hard to read poetry um, for that very reason. I don't find it very, um, uh, very easy, really. Um, and I, but listening to it, yeah, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I totally agree. It can be a bit like reading Leviticus sometimes, you know. You, <laughs> you, 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 get, you start, you know, very, very kind exactly. of focused, yeah, yeah. and then you kind of wander yeah, off and start thinking yeah, about the shopping. And uh, I need yeah, to yeah, get yeah. some Persil. Yeah, yeah. Can you still get Persil, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And you don't always get. I mean, it take, that's why the people spend time studying poetry because you you don't know the author's intention. It's quite hard sometimes to. Whereas when you hear their voice, you get a mm. much stronger sense of what they're. Uh, what they're trying to say, yeah. See, all this is leading me into saying about hearing your voice, uh, getting you to share some of, some of your poetry. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, why don't you give us two or three pieces? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, let's do some of the. Let's do a couple of the. I'll read you the one that was the first, uh, uh, the first lockdown poem I wrote, which was kind of fun. So this was the the first thing that kind of came to me when we were first. Uh, shut in at home and everybody was reeling from the shock of the idea of it. This is called Sela. Take the insult of this isolation, God, and fashion from it flourishing and fruitfulness. From this sentence of suspension, shape a Sabbath. Craft from this cessation celebration. In this uninvited interval, teach us, God, to savour slowness to find the sense in our solitude, to make of this a holy hiatus. Remind us where we have forgotten that music has meaning in the seesaw of silences and sound, that we read not by words alone, but by the spaces in between them, that we compute by urging every one to find its zero. We thrive by the thrust and the recoil. Our life is in the pressure and the pause. May the psalms we sing in our seclusion be the richer for the stillness of this sacred Selah moment. And uh, as I said, I, was, uh, I found myself, like many people on uh, lockdown, uh, taking walks uh, each day and... Uh, uh, I happened to notice, I was out walking one day and it was extremely quiet because there was no traffic. And I just started noticing some things that I, that I wouldn't normally notice. And I realized there was a whole, whole life happening around me that, that I was only seeing because everything else had stopped. And I wrote this little poem called Pulse. Buttercups are blooming across a lawn no one is mowing. Daisies unexpectedly unchained. In the hedgerows, brambles and weeds are overgrowing the limits we no longer maintain. The river where it ripples over rocks is free to sing, rid of traffic now, the loudest show in town. Woodland pathways pulse with the promise of spring. There is a life here that will not let us lock it down. And then this was another one where I, I, I got up one morning, this was last spring, and uh, I thought it was, it was fascinating. Uh, I think many people felt this, that as we were in lockdown, we were seeing the coming of spring, and that was a kind of an exciting thing. Uh, so this, uh, this is the poem that gave the title to this little collection called A World Still Turning. I woke to a world still turning, a sun still rising, Spring still breaking through. I listened to birds still singing, a dog somewhere barking, my fridge still humming. I watched a breeze still moving through flowers still blooming on a lawn still growing. I sensed my heart still beating, my blood still flowing, my lungs still working. And I knew there is more to be thankful for than to regret. There is more to celebrate than to denounce. Still more in the stillness to hope for than to fear. 
and uh, yeah, back to you, Dave. Yeah, great. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I mean, uh, I think Viv Stevenson put it, put it very succinctly, very visual, very visual images uh, that we're enjoying there. And I think um, very strong, you're getting, yeah, different people putting up notes, which is great oh, yeah. to responding. Yeah, uh, thanks. You, you, you mentioned the Psalms and um, I think the Psalms, you know, are this book of poetry that are these Absolutely. responses uh, from a God who uh wants to a relationship with us but not just in our, our in our sort of light moments uh moments of inspiration but also in our difficult times and uh your collection is is called a world still turning yeah um obviously acknowledging the fact that all this is going on but the world is still turning as you as you say in yeah. your poem there where yeah. can people get it uh, it's on amazon both the, both these collections are on amazon i should have put a link in actually shall i i'll put a link in this in this chat stream actually while we're yeah. mm -hmm. while we're uh, right. continuing. yeah right. sure and and there's another there's another book of poems you, you you've got or there's three actually isn't there there's there's the the one that that came out recently uh, yeah i mean the 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 there was one in way back in 2007 yeah. dave when the world was mm. young uh, called spoken worship that's still available and still uh, that's the one I'm still thinking. selling and then i did use uh, that don't they a lot of people yeah, use it gets, in the church yeah it gets used in church services and stuff yeah mm. and then i see a new city which i brought out in at the beginning of lockdown came out in april mm. and then a world still turning in mm. november I mean, how do you sort of develop the idea for writing a, a poem? Is it like writing a song? You get an I, you get a first line often, and then you work out from that line. Yeah, a li um, often for me, it's not it, there. There might be a line, but it's more likely to be an image or a single idea. Hmm. Um, but it is actually a worship thing for me. It's prayer. It's actually I, which is why I go through periods when I don't write, because hmm. I go through periods where if I'm very busy and doing a lot of stuff and distracted. I don't have time to stop and think and I don't pray as much as I should and I don't reflect so I don't write which is why writing is important to me because I know that if I'm writing then I'm also mm. taking time to reflect so mm. lockdown was quite fruitful for me because it slowed me down I did a lot more walking mm. and uh, and I, I this is the thing I mean I my whole theme with lockdown was there is good in this right from the beginning I felt God saying there is some good in this so stop complaining stop listing the negatives find the good and the richness in this and for me one of the things was the richness was just slowing down and uh, um, so for me it comes from if i take the time to slow down a, an idea will often come and then i'll work on it and i often spend the day you know, you probably do the same with songs spend the day or a couple of days kind of fiddling with things mm. and uh, and then it becomes a poem i don't that's why i do the, the reason i put them online is because i want to get it done i don't want to let it i don't spend uh months chipping away at something that's frustrating so it's get it done and then it's it's out there and then uh, yeah. maybe come back to it but yeah yeah basically yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah well i'm going to put you in the green room for a little yep. bit fantastic uh, i'll make a couple it. of songs and yeah. then we'll get you back because i want to talk Fashion. about why you are in in france and uh, great stuff dave yeah what is happening so uh we'll get you back shortly um take these off we talked about the psalm. This is a kind of modern day psalm. And I guess many of us are asking these questions from time to time. We wouldn't be human if we weren't. And it's okay to have our doubts, our feelings of fear, our insecurities. So this is a kind of poem set to music, I guess. Are these songs, are they prayers? I don't know. Are you here? Do you care? Walk my way. Don't let me languish in despair. Is there hope anywhere? Can you fix this hurt and anger that I bear? 
How long must I dwell in this darkness? Why are so many questions unresolved? I can't begin to understand I'm a stranger in a foreign land Who doesn't know the way back home Surround me with your present help Revive my wounded fragile heart Pour out your healing oil again Speak your words of life Tender words of life Guide my feet On your path Help me trust In your redeeming love once more Those who sow in tears Will reap with songs of joy Those who sow in tears Will reap with songs of joy Let my mouth be filled with laughter and my tongue was singing Turn your ear to me And hear my prayer Make a way in the wasteland And restore my soul my soul Unwearying love Has broken down my hostility Of all that was estranging from my Lord, unwearying love has taken the initiative. Now there's nothing that I can give to my Lord. I've been restored I've been restored With a heart full of praise For the rest of my days I'll worship my Lord I've been restored been restored with a heart full of praise for the rest of my days I'll worship my Lord unwearying love has met me in my helplessness And led me through the wilderness to my Lord, unwearying love. Our lives together intertwined. Now I am His and He is mine. He's my Lord I've been restored I've been restored 
with a heart full of praise for the rest of my days I'll worship my Lord I've been restored I've been restored with a heart full of praise for the rest of my days, I'll worship my Lord. I've been restored. Yeah. That's an old song, and I can't sing that song without thinking of my dear friend Steve Criddle, who so often would play that and accompany uh, me as I sang that song as I'm looking for my headphones. There we are. Well, Gerard, let's get you back, shall we? And, um, my goodness. So what are you actually doing in France? I mean, it's a lovely place to live. It is a wonderful place, yes. But what, what took you um, there? Via Holland, I have to say. You went to, to uh, Netherlands first. Didn't yeah, you? we were four years in Amsterdam, uh, mm -hmm. pastoring a massive international church there, which was a absolute le le steep learning curve. It was great. Yeah. And we came here because uh, all that time we were continuing to run this thing we called the Blessed Network, which was mostly at that time giving young people an opportunity to engage in mission, doing missional experiences. Um, and we had an opportunity to set up a base here uh, at a, a place called Bethany, which is a farm we bought out in the countryside here. Mm. Um, and we felt it was the right time to give Bless a kind of home. So we moved, that's where we moved to uh, 11 years ago. Mm. Um, so we run that as a kind of training center, obviously extremely quiet at the moment. It's normally uh, very, very busy in the summer and then various weekends and weeks through the year. But the last 12 months has been very, very little. Um, but we have groups coming from all over America, Canada, the UK, Holland, um, to do some experience mission here in France. But also we do teaching and training around kind of missional. What does it mean to be missional as Christians? Yeah, so I was going to say you use that phrase mission. And for some people, yeah. you know, tuning in, they'll, they'll have different connotations. Or I some know. Be the first time they've heard that, that, that phrase. What do you actually mean by mission, you know, what, I, succinctly? I know. I'd love a new word if we could find one, actually. Yeah, because it has some... <laughs> Some people look at me as scared. Uh, it means living uh, a Christian faith that has, has impact in the world, really. It's actually the understanding that the kingdom of God uh, is intended to bring measurable change in people's lives, measurable change to cultures and societies. So our fundamental belief is the way that works is that every human being has gifts that God has given them. Uh, they, have, yeah, they have gifts that they were given at birth or that they have through who they are as people. And there are gifts that the Holy Spirit adds to that. So that every person is designed to be effective and useful and impactful on their environment, basically. Mm. And we do a lot of work. We run a course called The Seven Stories, which is really about unlocking that in people and encouraging people to find that place, find a place where their life is meaningful and useful uh, to others. And obviously, we use the overseas thing a lot because actually we've discovered that that there is something about about experiencing another culture that unlocks that for people. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people are very blind in their own culture, even to their own gifts and stuff, because it's all just every day. And engaging with another culture unlocks something. So we're we're about that really, unlocking people in their giftings and releasing them. And yeah, that's know, life for us. I know a tremendous focus is on the creative side. You know, yeah. Because everybody, everybody is creative, although Absolutely. they may not acknowledge it in different yeah. different spheres. It doesn't mean to say yeah. we can all be poets or musicians. But unlocking that creative side, giving people the self belief. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that creativity is a, is 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 one of those areas that we as church, we as God's people, can can really participate in in society at large? In of course. I mean, isn't it don't isn't it dumb? Don't you think we've been dumb? as churches for centuries to somehow think that art and creativity is separate from what it means to know God. When our God, the creator, is the author of those gifts. It's extraordinary, actually, that we have so 
kind of miss that really. So we, yeah, we are really into encouraging people into creativity. And and off, and one of the things we're learning is that um, is to um, blur the distinction in a sense. This sounds like heresy, but stay with me for a moment. <laughs> between Christian and non-Christian, because people are gifted because God made them to be human, and He is their Creator and Maker and Lord, whether they know it or not. Mm -hmm. And actually, sometimes it's being released into creativity that enables you to understand who God might be. So we appreciate creative gifts right across the board. Um, we work with this as a uh, with this refugee community in Car, and one of our things with them is to release their giftings, it's to let them be effective and let them do. So yeah, we we I love the creative arts, and uh, we use a lot. Um, obviously, the writing, but we have a lot of painters hanging around, musicians. Thank you. Um, and popular culture. I know you're you're very into film. You know you see uh, yeah. great parables in in, in many, many films. That yeah. God, God yeah. could often speak to people through. Yes, through absolutely. Films, but sometimes we're sort of blind to to actually the impact yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. I think we went through a see the evangelical church, if that's where people come from, uh, from the sort of late nineteenth century through the twentieth went into a very funny thing where they somehow thought the world belonged to someone other than God. It was the weirdest thing. We kind of thought God owned the church and worship songs and, and some limited stuff, but some other, somebody else owned everything else and it's ludicrous. So we, we kind of let other people just do all that stuff. Um, but it's all gods, it's all gifts, every creative. The, the, one of my favorite that God has really, really been speaking to this a lot in, in, um, uh, over the last uh, year or two, uh, that we a lot of us are learning that, that God is good, obviously. But the other thing I'm learning is that goodness, all goodness comes from God. There is no source of life and creativity and goodness in the universe other than God the creator. The devil can't make good and beautiful things. So beauty comes from God. Mm. Whether that beauty is reflected in the life of a believer or not, where you see beauty, you point to it and say, that is God. And sometimes you point to it in the life of someone who's not a believer and say, you don't even realize it, but that is God because mm -hmm. beauty is God. So we need to recover the idea that beauty uh, resonates with who God is. And we need to be much more free in acknowledging and loving and blessing beauty wherever we see it and encouraging all those. I think every human being who is trying to pursue beauty and peace and love, we should honor and we should say, do more of that. Because mm -hmm. the longer you go down that road, the closer you'll come. Mm. to god and one day he'll the veil will be lifted and you'll name him uh, but and beauty is god expressing beauty can be a wonderful thing within the context of a church community uh the uh, the all the originality that can come out absolutely the, the different personalities and 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 uh I know you believe in, you know, community as, as church, not just a church yeah. building. That's yeah. very much a focus yeah. of, of, of what you are. Do you think church yeah. is changing the shape of it? And, oh, yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's quite funny, though, because the, the, the conversations we're all having this year and church leaders are having are actually conversations that we've been having for the last 50 years. Hmm. But for the last 50 years, it's been this theoretical idea of, Maybe church isn't just about what we do on Sundays. Maybe there's more to it than just turning up. And now, suddenly, this crisis has forced us to, to confront that properly. Mm. But it's not, it's not a new, there's, it's not that nobody's come up with a new idea in 2020 that no one's had before. No one's suddenly woken up and said it's all different. <laughs> but what we've realized is the stuff we've been thinking about, sometimes on the fringes for the last, yeah, maybe, well, 30 years anyway. Is real is very very real now, and the the thing that has gone and won't come back is the basic idea that you can please God by turning up in a certain building once a week. The notion, which I I grew up as a when I, in my early years I was raised a Catholic, and for five hundred years people right across our, the Western world have been convinced that the way you please God is to quote unquote attend church. Well, that's gone now. And thank the Lord that it's gone because it's nonsense. But that has so gone from our thinking now that we're genuinely starting to say, well, if that's not what pleases God, what does? If turning up at church isn't what makes me a Christian, what does make me a Christian? What 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 mean? And those are great questions. Mm -hmm. So we're in a great season of exploration and trying yeah. to find out. And some people will fall off the edge of a cliff and do crazy stuff. 
and, and others will find the but we're finding out that there are there must be other ways of expressing mm. what it means to be Christian community other than turning up in a building with a pointy hat yeah once a week so yeah. it's a it's a time of exploration but it's a time of great I think great fruitfulness will come I think we're I, the word revival I'm learning to love it I didn't used to like the word but I think we're on the edge of revival I think we're on the edge of something exceptional I definitely uh, believe there's a shift. Yeah, there's a shift. Ooh. I mean, I, you know, started with those opening quotes. You got Bob Mumford, a pioneer yes. in the early charismatic movement. Um, yeah. You've got uh, Pope Francis. Uh, you know, you've got people uh, saying it's, it's time for a move forward Absolutely. into the new and leave yeah. behind some of the stuff that we yeah. just have, have, have adopted as part of a uh, part of culture. And a big part of that as well for you is, is this community is eating together, is, yeah. is, is connecting together. And I mean, I'm excited by what the ch the shape of, of church, you know, maybe not just go back to things as they were, but move and yeah. press, press yeah. forward. Yeah. The first doctrinal statement we wrote for the church we're planting here in France, before we wrote anything else, Dan, we wrote a rule, as often as you eat, as often as you meet together, eat together. Hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. It's been amazing. And hmm. we try and do that as much as possible, that we actually hmm. gather around the table. Um, and it, it's fantastic for people who aren't Christians, who aren't used to church. Yeah. And what you invite them into is yeah. is family meal time, not anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good, it's an interesting time, isn't it? Yes, yeah, certainly is. Anyone interested who's watching this, uh, is, is some stuff going to come up on the on the screen there that they can connect? Or oh, Pat's been doing that as we as we've been talking. And um, so you know, people who come there, they come for a long time, or just a few weeks, or a year, or. Uh, no, well, we we have an intern program, so we have some people who come for. Um, uh, the, it can be a year. At the moment, it has for the UK. It has to be three months because mm. uh, certain certain political decisions have been made. We're not in your country anymore, um, so it's limited. But yeah, we have internships. But then we run programs for weekends, weeks, ten days. It's a so. And to be honest, at the moment, uh, once people are traveling again, people can just come and spend some time at Bethany. We have people who just come and. We have a gorgeous prayer room out there, which is just beautiful, and a uh, chance to just spend time in prayer um, mm. and join with our rhythm of uh, as, a, as a local community. That's great, yeah. Well, look, I'm going to get you to uh, do a poem that I very much enjoy, of sure. yours, which is uh, I See a New City. Mm. And I think, you know, that's so embedded that there's this, uh, what's happening now, but there's this vision for the future. You know, Absolutely. Album, hidden kingdom. People, people are watching it. Well, no, it, it's a hidden kingdom, and yet it's one we perceive as we begin to press forward into into new things. So, I think it'd be great if you could um, read us that that that, I'd love that to, yeah. uh, poem, Gerard. And uh, I thank you so much for joining with us from from northern northwest France. <laughs> uh, it, it's been a delight and a pleasure, and I I, I can tell by the the responses. Uh, you're connecting a lot with with where people are which is which is great to know and, and, and great to see so i look forward to connecting with you again soon gerard Keep yeah i'd love to poems coming yeah absolutely don't forget to tune in to uh, his his uh, latest uh, book a world still turning and uh thank you so much for joining yeah. with us thank you it's been you great a poem really and then i'll special. follow up with a song and we'll, great. we'll move we'll move things on from there you can go and bring yourself a cup of tea <laughs> Thanks, Dave. This is I See a New City. I see a new city poured out from heaven, dressed for a party blazing with beauty. Her rooftops are radiant, trees trembling with laughter, and joy like a jewel shines in her streets. From her walls and windows, no weeping is heard. Through her gateways and gutters, floods of tears do not flow. For in her homes and houses, no pain dwells. Bricks once broken down in mourning rise again in song and celebration. Stones thrown down by enmity and envy dare to dance in swirling swathes of mercy. She sings, a billion voices rising. The long lost languages of human hopes, the secret praise of human hearts released at last because her God is with her. Because his home is made within her walls, because his voice is heard, 
gentle like the rains of spring, declaring new, new, new. I am making all things new. This is the city I see, the future I belong to. This is the blueprint my heart holds on to, even now in streets that sing another story, even here beneath a darker vision's shadow. This metropolis of mercy, promising future realization, active now in love's imagination. This is my dream. And though I wait, and though I long, and though the sacred city may seem slow, still I will hope, still I will pray, still I will today rise up and build. Beautiful, so inspirational. Thank you, Gerard. There is a river, a beautiful river, dreaming with love for the hurting, the wounded, the lost and long, bringing forgiveness, the power of a new life, stirring our hearts to rise and sing in praise to our God. You make all things new. You make all things new. You make all things new. In the light of your love. You make all things new. Make all things new. You make all things new in the light of your love. There is a river, a fast flowing river, carrying hope for the future, a purpose, a calling for all. Changing boundaries, continually moving, stirring our hearts to rise and sing in praise to our God. You make all things new, you make all things new, you make all things new. In the light of your love, you make all things new. You make all things new. You make all things new. In the light of your love, unblock this river, your beautiful river. Held back by past rejection, fear, and the weariness of age. I want to be open to the words that you've spoken. I might not be young, but I believe the best is to come. Make all things. Make all things new. You make all things new in the light of your love. You make all things new. You make all things new. You make all things new in the light of your love. In the light of your love, in the light of your love, you make all things new in the light of your love. 
And these homespun sessions really are such a wonderful opportunity for us to renew our hearts, our minds, our spirits in the good things about who God is and about what he's doing. And I thank Gerard for the pioneering work that he is doing over in northwest France. Many of you have faced difficult weeks, uh, struggles, um, situations with loved ones which you can't reach and you can't be with. Many of you are going through difficulties of what is my job, what is my future, where am I going in life? Well, you're very welcome here. And every week we do you know, give that opportunity for prayer. Next week we're going to extend that uh, even more. But I don't want to finish Homespun without taking the opportunity for us together just to open up our heart in prayer. Prayer and song and music and poetry, they're all interweaved in together, us speaking to God, God speaking back to us. And so just as a, a group over the airwaves and um, God is not limited by the screen, he wants to speak through the screen, let's just focus just for a moment and on an Almighty God whose presence is with us in tangible and yet sometimes unseen ways, whose presence changes things. And sometimes we don't have all the answers. That's the mystery of who God is. His thoughts are not our thoughts so often. And yet he tells us to come with simple childlike faith, as we do just now. And we offer those loved ones to you. And we say, Lord, come, move in their situation. Would you touch lives? Would you touch hearts? Would you give fresh hope? And would, most of all, your presence be filling their living room right now, or maybe their hospital ward, or maybe their care home? Lord, would your presence just come and surround them? Would the beauty of your presence whisper peace, assurance, hope? And that thing that we can't sum up just with words, just the knowledge that you Almighty God are with us, Emmanuel. Lord, be with all those we love, we work with, our lives touch. And praying outwardly, we pray for those key workers again. We pray your blessing upon them and your wisdom upon them. And we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I've already touched on it, but next week we are going to focus on prayer and it's our 40th, 40th, a reason for celebration, I think. So next week is going to be an opportunity for you to um, submit your requests of songs that we've sung throughout this, this season. Now, I want you to submit them by sending an email and Pat's put up, uh, putting up the, um, the details of the email to send to, which is strum at davebilber.com. And if there's a particular song you would like me to sing next week on our 40th celebration, then um, do mail it through. And it would be really good if you could give a reason, you know, why you want that particular song. Perhaps that song has touched you in the past. Perhaps it's spoken to you over the duration of, of Homespun. But any song, it doesn't need to be a, a new one. It could be an old one. Email uh, Dave Bilber, strum at davebilbera.com um, and send me an email. Now, don't go on my, put it on my Facebook page necessarily, uh, but it has to be one of my songs that I've sung over that period. We have to sing my song for copyright reasons, uh, which we won't go into right now. Um, so one of my songs that I've sung over this season might be an old one might be something new that's caught your attention in your, your ears. That will go you searching through the 39 uh, volumes on the e You're going to have a busy week this week, aren't you, going through all that? Um, email it to me and uh, I'll do my best to include it in uh, next week's programme. I also, um, yeah, so we want the emails to keep it as a surprise to everyone. Otherwise, everyone's reading it like, oh, he's going to do that one and that one. I don't like that one. I won't be with you next week. There's got to be a bit of surprise to it. So for our 40th celebration, that's going to be next week. Um, 
I also want to flag up again the podcast series Hidden Kingdom. Uh, great podcast went up last week with David Garrett from New Zealand. Um, and we were talking about worship and how it's evolved over the years. But he also, being a, one of the older brigade, he, he's able to look back and give a critique on some of our, our worship and the way we do it, um, which, you know, is, you know, helpful to hear. And uh, I'm sure many of you will resonate with that. I'm going to finish with one final song. Once again, thank you, Gerard. Um, but Carol Lee Sampson um, put together a beautiful uh, rendition of uh, an old song of mine, Raining in All Splendor. And uh, it's great to hear it with a different voice, uh, somebody else singing it. But uh, I'm going to finish with me singing this song. Check out all the details on Gerard. Check out Carol's uh, details on her Facebook page and on her uh, website page. And the same with Danny Oakes. There's so many great people who are coming through, who are doing great things. Sometimes they don't get the headlines, but we need to support them and encourage them and recognize those God-given talents and gifts they have. Raining in all splendor. Raining in our splendor, victorious love, Christ Jesus the Savior, transcendent above. All earthly dominions and kingdoms shall fall, for his name is Jesus, and he is the so much for joining with us see you again next week on our 40th celebration spread the word let's make it a party in amongst the prayer and the worship god bless you all